um, even after having read everything else that she wrote, that she wrote, that she wrote, that she wrote. And she's a 36 year old woman living in New York. She's a successful. The next book she wrote is Here Where We Belong. It's not what it's called. I'm looking right at it. It's not what it's called. I want to talk about more. more. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is going to be another author spotlight video and by another, I mean my second one, but hopefully the second in a series. So I'll link the first one I did um, about Alifair Burke somewhere up above. But today's video is going to be a spotlight on Emily Giffen. I discovered Emily Giffen, I would say probably 12 years ago. Her first book came out in 2004 and when I discovered her, her first two books were already out and the third one was sort of like on the way. And I instantly became obsessed with her writing. She wrote chick lit books, um, really stories about friendship and love and just completely connected with what she was writing and the stories that she was telling. And she has since, um, she has nine books in total that she's written and I just finished her eighth book as part of contemporary -athon. So now that I've read all of her books, I feel like this is a great opportunity to talk about her. And her first two books are a duology. So I would say those you need to read in order. The rest of them are all standalones. You can really start anywhere. And kind of like with the Alifair Burke, um, spotlight that I did. I'm not going to go into like a deep dive on every single book, but I'll touch on each book, talk about the ones that I liked um, and why, and we'll just, you know, kind of take it from there. So I am going to start at the beginning and that is Something Borrowed and Something Blue. So like I said, this is the duology. You need to read them in order. Otherwise, this is going to not make as much sense and spoil the whole first book. But it starts with a story of two best friends, Rachel and Darcy, and they have been best friends since they were younger, grew up together. They're both living in Manhattan now, and it's the night of Rachel's 30th birthday is kind of when our story opens. And Rachel is sort of the quintessential good girl. She's a lawyer, and Darcy is kind of the more free-spirited wild child you know, kind of, I wouldn't totally call her like the bad friend, but if we're doing the good girl, then Darcy's kind of like the bad girl. And Darcy is engaged to a guy named Dax, who is one of Rachel's close friends. They went to law school together. And on the night of Rachel's 30th birthday, Darcy throws her a party. Darcy, for some reason that I don't remember, leaves. And Rachel and Dex go out for drinks and maybe wind up in bed together. So... Rachel sounds like she's not that much of a good girl and she tries to just like leave it behind her one night stand. We're just going to move on from this. We're not going to tell Darcy, but she starts to develop feelings for Dex and kind of always has because they've known each other for a really long time and kind of for the first time in forever, life starts to get complicated for Rachel and she finds herself not wanting to necessarily do good girl things and be the good girlfriend. So the wedding is looming and there's all sorts of stuff that needs to be sorted in the meantime. It is, it's such a good book and I feel like it's such a great story about friendships and love and the complications that go with it and you know how friendships can change over time and how you know people do the unexpected sometimes and obviously Rachel's doing something that's not necessarily likable I mean, we don't want people sleeping with your best friends, boyfriends or husbands or fiancés, but at the same time, you understand her and I found you did root for her. So it's very well done. Like I said, it's chick lit. It's, it was like such relatable writing. And I mean, I was living in New York at the time. Like I totally got it. Um, I just think it was such a good book. And then Something Blue tells life from Darcy's perspective and she's not like an all bad character and she's complicated and she's got her own things too. So I very much enjoyed reading it from both perspectives, having both of their stories and obviously Rachel's kind of supposed to be the hero in the first book and you're probably not supposed to like Darcy because she doesn't always do likable things. But what I found is that I really liked both of them and you really get to understand them both through the two different books, you know, like I said, these go together. You can start anywhere with Emily Giffen's books, but these are kind of like classic her and I love them and I've read them both multiple times. 
Her third book is probably my favorite, and that is Baby Proof. And this is a book about a married couple, Claudia and Ben, and when they got married, you know, and kind of before they got married, they knew that they didn't want to have children. And they were going to be child-free by choice, and they didn't care what anybody else said, and this is how they were going to live, which is completely fine and completely valid. And, you know, they've been married, and kind of through the course of their relationship now, one of them has a change of heart, and that rips them apart. And this is a story about, you know, the things you'll do for love and the things you'll do for your partner. And do you compromise what you've wanted or in this case didn't want to make the other person happy? Or would you lose your relationship over this? Can you ever kind of agree to disagree and stay together when you are both wanting different things and want different paths in life now? And sort of what leads to the change and what leads to the person changing their mind. And really, this is just such an emotional book. And what I think Emily Giffen kind of at her best does a great job of is talking about these complications in relationships and these difficult things. And she puts so much emotion into it and so much heart into it. And, you know, sometimes it is difficult conversations or ugly choices or difficult choices where you have you know, kind of like in the case of Rachel, you have a good person, you know, doing a bad thing. And here you have this couple who was together for a long time and both thought that they were on that same page and on that same path. And something, you know, flips in one of them and changes. And now what do you do? You had all of this mapped out and you thought you had this great marriage and relationship and everything changes. So I think it was like a really unique storyline and how it was done. And again, the complications of it and sort of the gut-wrenching things that this couple goes through and you know can you find a way to stay together or can you find a way to get back together or get back to who you were um, when you fell in love in the first place the next book is love the one you're with and i should have mentioned this at the beginning but i love the covers of these books and they do change at some stage but i loved um kind of all the little clever pictures and the graphics and everything i just think they're beautiful books but this is a book that is all about the one who got away and it is about a couple, Ellen and Andy, and they are happily married and there's, you know, nothing wrong with their relationship and no reason for, um, you know, any kind of arguments or anything going wrong. They are happy. Life is good. And then Ellen runs into Leo, who was her ex from about like eight years ago. And all these unresolved feelings about him, all of these emotions she's kind of like suppressed and hasn't thought about and, you know... Obviously, he, you know, wasn't that great of a guy, but he's also the one she never got over and never kind of dealt with her feelings for him. And suddenly she is faced with this question of, you know, am I with the person I'm supposed to be with? Am I supposed to be with Andy living the life I'm supposed to be living? Or is Leo my soulmate and that's the path I'm supposed to be on and that's the life I'm supposed to live? So it's you know, a question of true love and a question of soulmates and a question of fate. So, you know, love the one you're with. What do you do? It's good though. The next book she wrote is Heart of the Matter. And I feel like this is kind of where things took um, like a heavier turn and not in a bad way, but I feel like she started to get kind of like deeper in her exploration about relationships and complications and not darker issues per se, but maybe more complicated issues. And this is a book about um, two women, Tessa and Valerie. So Tessa is a mom of two and her husband's a pediatric surgeon. And um, Valerie, sorry, is a single mom kind of, you know, doing her best to make ends meet. And they both live in the suburbs of Boston, but they don't know each other. They've never met. And then kind of, you know, one night there is an accident that brings their lives together and kind of changes everything. So this is a really um, kind of deeper dive into motherhood and again, marriage and relationships. And you have, like I say, the happily married woman, you have the single mom, you have the complications of, you know, both of their lives. And then this thing that happens that kind of turns both their lives on a bit of an axis. And this is told from the perspectives of both of the moms. So it's kind of, um, even though she did like a whole Rachel book and a whole Darcy book, this is the first time where you've got a book where you have the dueling perspectives. And it was definitely well done. I hate to say I don't remember all of the details of this one as vividly. Um, it's been a while since I've read this book and I haven't reread this one, but I do remember kind of the loose emotions of it 
And again, I was still knee deep in love with Emily Giffen um, at the time of writing this. And it's really, it's good. It's really good. And like I say, I think it's the first time that she dives a little bit deeper into some issues. And she touches obviously on motherhood and baby proof because you've got, you know, the husband and wife and like, do we or don't we want to have children? But here you have um, the moms themselves. So you get some more complicated issues. Her next book is Where We Belong. And this is a book about a woman named Marion, who is a 36 year old woman living in New York. She's single, she's successful, she's a TV producer. She kind of has like this great life and this great apartment and you know, everything's going swimmingly. So of course something's gotta come and disrupt that. And it comes in the form of an 18 year old girl named Kirby who kind of knocks on her door one night and spins Marion's entire life kind of into turmoil. And this is really a story about, you know, Marion's past and the key that kind of Kirby holds to that and sort of ushers back all of these old memories and old emotions. And for Kirby, she is, you know, kind of trying to find out, you know, who she is and find her way in the world. And she's sort of grappling with her family and with kind of where she fits in. And, you know, the whole idea is, you know, where we belong is not always where you thought it was. And this is a story about these two women kind of at very different points in their life, but coming together um, at a certain point in their life. So this is another one that I haven't read in a long time. And as you can tell, I mean, I bought all of these in hardcover. I was, you know, I was the girl who was there the day the book came out. And I have not reread this one either, but flipping through it, it is meaningfully marked up and underlined. And again, I was still knee deep in love with Emily Giffen. So I don't have as much to say about this one because I don't remember the details as much. Um, but again, it is, you know, it is these heartfelt, emotional stories that she writes. And I love her writing style as well. Um, so another one, obviously, um, that I enjoyed. The next book is The One and Only, and I used to have this book, but I have since unhauled it, and I had it, you know, again, day one, hardback. And this is where Emily and I started to not see eye to eye. So I would say she took a bit of a risk with this book, and for me, it did not pay off. And I read the entire book, because I had high hopes it was going to get better, but I, really did not enjoy this book. And I won't spoil it here, but I will, um, I've mentioned this in a different video. I did a, like a very thorough spoiler full Goodreads review on this when I read it. And you can check out my Goodreads, my link is down below um, if you wanna read more about it. But this is basically a story of two girls who grew up together, great friends in this small town in Texas. And kind of where it opens is one of the girls, Lucy, her mom has just passed away from cancer, long battle with cancer, leaving her and her dad kind of alone. And her dad is sort of this renowned football coach um, of the college, you know, that they're the college town of. And the other friend, Shay, works for the college football team with the dad. And this is a story about how Shay is sort of at a point in her life where she's kind of questioning everything and wondering if she's on the right path and she's like dating this football player and is he really the guy for me and maybe somebody else is the guy for me and that sort of creates a huge rift between the friends and Shay goes down an unexpected path and man I wish she didn't I just I hated this book I absolutely hated this book and it broke my heart because I loved every book Emily Given had written up until this point and loved her as a writer. And this is where it went south for me. And this book came out a few years ago. Um, I wanna say maybe like 2014-ish. And after I read this book, I didn't pick up another Emily Giffen book until um, December of 2018. Okay, so the next book she wrote is called First Comes Love, and I read her last two books out of order, but I'm gonna talk about them in order. And I just read, slash, I listened to the audiobook of First Comes Love as part of contemporary a -thon, and I loved this book. And this, to me, is 100% why I love Emily Giffen, and it is everything I expected, you know, from her kind of before, um, the one and only, and it made me cry and it pulled at my heart and it was well written and the story was well told. And this is a story about two sisters who um, 15 years earlier, their older brother was killed in a car crash. 
and 15 years later, they're kind of coming on the anniversary of his death. They are still dealing with, you know, how his death has affected them and their parents and their entire family. And it's also where these two sisters are at in their life. And it is told from the perspective of both sisters. So what I love about it, and if you have a sister, I feel like you'll appreciate this even more, is it's not like every scene told twice kind of by each sister, but there is some overlap in some places. And I love how you've got sort of like sister number one telling her story and then the other sister's interpretation of it, which is completely different and why they're not always on the same page. And it's like, you know, you love your family, but you don't always have to like them. And I think the complications of sisters and the idea that all sisters are best friends is so not true. And I think this is such a great portrait of sort of the reality of sisters, whether or not your family has endured tragedy. It is really well written. So you have one sister who's married and has a child, and then you have the second sister who is single. She kind of hasn't totally gotten over her last relationship and like to put salt in her wound, her ex's daughter is in her class. She's a first grade teacher. So now she has to look at like her ex's spawn all the time. And all she wants is a child of her own. But again, she's single, she has no prospects. So you have these two women, you know, kind of a few years apart, but at very different stages in their life and looking for different things and being restless and sort of how to get what you want and how to figure out what's not working. And then you've got the overarching death of their brother, um, which is kind of gradually sprinkled through. And again, how they're both still dealing with this and how it impacts kind of everything. Um, that they do and that their family is doing. And it's just, again, so well written. It is everything I wanna read from her. It is everything I hope she does going forward. Absolutely love this um, to the point that I think I'm gonna pick it up on Book Outlet so that I can add it um, to my stack of books. The last book she wrote is called All We Ever Wanted. And I read this back in December and I did kind of a more detailed discussion of it in my wrap up. So I'll link that for you guys if you want to kind of hear more about it. But this is a book where I think she took another bit of a risk, not too crazy of a risk, but a little bit more of a leap outside of kind of her normal story. And I think it paid off better here. So I think this was a really good book. It was well written. I think the story was good. It was timely. It made me cry. And like I said, this was the first book by her I had read since um, our falling out a few years ago, and it got me hooked back onto her. So this is a story kind of just very briefly. It's, it's two families in Nashville, and they are parents of high school kids. And the kids go to a party one night, and what winds up happening is the girl gets drunk, passes out, and a photo of her kind of drunk, passed out, and partially clothed winds up circulating amongst all of the kids. And it's believed that the son of the other family took the picture, but he denies it. And it's everything that happens after that. And it is about families and relationships and what you will do for your children and what you will do in your marriage and kind of the lengths you're willing to go to to do the right thing and what is the right thing and, you know, kind of what if you're doubting people or who do you believe and what's going on and kind of all the other families in the area. It's a small tight-knit community are involved and it's this affluent private school that they all go to. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in this one. But it is, again, what I love about her writing and what I expect from her writing in all the best ways. And I really liked it. I really did. So those are my thoughts on Emily Giffen. And like I said at the beginning, I love so many of her books. I really think she's a great writer. And I do think there has been an evolution of her books over time. Although even all the way at the beginning with Something Borrowed, there is so much true emotion to that book. And like I say, the complications in the relationships and friendships and families. And I think that is sort of an overarching theme in all of her books and something she touches on, but never touches on it the same way twice, if that makes sense. And I also love that she doesn't, you know, well, you know, she does have books that will have happy endings at points. Not everything is always clear. There's some things that are in the gray. You're not always sure. It's not always about like somebody being right and wrong. Um, there's just a lot of different layers to it. And I, I love that she shows kind of the warts and all in relationships. I think she does some really beautiful storytelling. I think she does some really great character development and to me, her writing is so accessible. 
Her books are so like easy to read and I don't mean that they're simplistic in any way, but they're the kind of books where I fly through them, I you know, fall in love with the characters. I want to know what's going to happen next for them. I want to see how their lives are going to, you know, unfold. And I really enjoy being in the story with them and with her. So if you have not read Emily Giffen at all, you literally could start anywhere. But to kind of depending, you know, what you're looking for, kind of where you're at in your life or what sort of stories you like, I think you cannot go wrong with Baby Proof. I really, really, really love this book. I think, um, First Comes Love, which I is still so fresh with me because I just finished it the other day. And again, I love the sister story and the complications with them. And then I think, you know, start at the beginning, Something Borrowed, Something Blue. I think Rachel and Darcy will surprise you and make you laugh and kind of, you know, make your heart ache also. And, you know, anyone who's had a best friend knows that relationships are not always straightforward and easy. And you know, it's all of it. It's the things you do for love. And I think she just writes really great stories with the exception of one. Um, and I feel like a horrible person ever saying that because I know writing a book is not easy. And I know taking risks as a writer is not easy. And you're not always going to please your audience. But those are kind of my all in feelings. But I would love to know if you guys are Emily Giffen fans and if you are what your favorite books are. And if you haven't read her before, are you going to pick anything up by her? So let me know all your thoughts down below. I'm definitely going to continue in this series and I don't know who I'm going to do next. So we're just both going to have to be surprised about that one. But hopefully if you haven't read anything by Emily Giffen, I've inspired you to pick up one of her books or if maybe you haven't read her in a while, um, you'll be inspired to pick up one of her newer ones. But either way, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out today and spending some time here. And hopefully um, I will see you back here soon. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and that little bell that goes along with it. So you know when my next video is coming and I will see you in that video. So thanks everybody. Bye.